Welcome back, friends, to another week of Roleplaying Unlimited presents Descent in Tavernus. The first part of the title is no longer applicable. We are here in the first layer of hell. Joining me in the on this side of the table, we have Evil Dawn. What's up? What's up, what's up? And next to him, uh, sporting his brand new character portrait there of the tiefling Nadir, we have Justin. What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome. Hope to see y'all have a good time. We're going to have a good time. And this time next week, we should uh, see a brand new character portrait for the next guy on this side of the table there. Say hello, James. Oh, oh hello there. It's me, the heart of the team. Back at it again. So, uh, we look forward to uh, a wild night, if you will. I'm disappointed. I fully expected you to go, It's me! It's me! It's that D.O. It was D-O. me all along! <laughs> <laughs> ne- next week. Next week. And staring across the opposite side of the table there, we have Ben. Hey, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us again. And here in uh, spirit form only, we have the character of Jong Hoon, uh, temporarily taken over again by Justin. He's going to be double up in tonight between the two characters here. So we wish him and our adventurers the best of luck as they continue their adventures here on the first layer of hell. Wait, first layer of hell? I thought we were supposed to be doing layer cake. No, you you guys went to the wrong portal for, for that. In any case, you can see here on our virtual tabletop on the center of the screen there, the results of last week's combat. For once, we did not end the session in the midst of combat. We actually finished the combat, and the players got their first sense of satisfaction in killing these three bearded devils here in the process rescuing this woman here who is carrying a bow with some silvered arrows actually and accompanying her are two twin boys about two years old and after you have slain the last of the bearded devils she uh, just collapses at Nadir's feet he's the closest one right there next to her and Praise, praise the gods, you've saved us. What, who sent you? We, we, we sent ourselves. Um, perhaps you can help us. We are looking for some people. I, obviously, your people, but uh, I, I, I kind of look over at Rhea like, uh, you're from here. Do you know her? I have not had the, the pleasure until this moment, Miss. The woman just kind of nods over at Rhea, recognizes the garb of a warrior of the Hellriders, in addition to the holy symbol of Torm. And she says, Miss Hunt, my name's Harkin the Hunt, and these are, these are my boys. Um, what, where is it, what, what is it that you need to know? Well, uh, is there any other resistance? Has, is there any leadership in town still? This, this side of town... As, as I have come to understand, is much worse off than the opposite side. We, we have only just dared to venture out for the first time since the city came to this horrible place. We, we were fortunate to find refuge in, in this tavern, and she gestures over the building to, uh, on the right side of the map here. There were provisions to keep us alive for a few days, but when those ran out, we had to brave finding an alternative source just to survive. And she gestures at the devils that that now lie dead in the street as if that's the rest of the story. So it's just the three of you in there, no one else? There were others. They left yesterday, some the day before that, seeking safety, supplies, food. None of them have returned. I had to look after my my boys and try to provide for them as best I can. This section of the city is under continual assault from from all these fiends. Also, the city seems to be sinking. 
Um, we need to get everybody out of the city and hopefully to somewhere uh, a little safer than this. So we need you to head towards an exit and let anybody else that you see know. Uh-oh. When he gets going, he sometimes cuts out. You know, sometimes he does talk. It gets very emotional. He has to stop, so don't mind him. Right. No, the the city is sinking. We need to get you guys. We need to get you out of here. Um, so what you need to do is also find anyone else who's trapped in here and lead them to uh, a city exit. I think we may be better off with us if we're heading for the keep where the uh, other Hellriders might be. Yeah, she kind of looks astounded that the uh, the devil is suggesting we'll protect you and the angel is saying all right go off with you go do this <laughs> we make ourselves a target though so we will always be under attack and we can't always watch behind us she was under attack when we got here so everyone is a target if they're not from this place isn't the city floating in air right now The city is, it is currently suspended in midair. It is attached to these giant chains, which uh, you cannot currently see from your position. Uh, you just got a glimpse of them through the, the map that we, or the illustration that we looked at upon arriving here in Averns, from the kind of a grounds view looking up at the city. Yeah, if anybody's going to be unmolested here, it might be me, me alone, because I look like I belong here. We need to keep these people safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So be it. I understand your reasoning. Um, I thought they would be safer, you know, without us drawing attention. But you are right. Them just being here will draw attention. So come along with us. We must protect everyone that we can, that we come across, says your polyphen companion, Lulu as she just kind of floats into the uh, the midst of your group and something about her presence instills uh, almost kind of a security blanket just a, a warm fuzzy comes over you anytime this uh, little miniature Dumbo with uh, golden fur happens to be nearby Is there a mechanical benefit from that? Or? There might be, nothing that you've uh, been able to Thus far. I feel I don't know about you guys, but I feel really good about uh, murdering those those enemies. I don't know. I just all of a sudden, I felt really warm inside my heart. I just want to share that. <laughs> well, it is uh, heartening to know that when we destroy them here, it will actually destroy them, and it will take them much time to become something new. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I know that death isn't quite permanent. Your right, conversation right. is cut off by the sudden appearance of a bolt of lightning from that crackling blue orb, that dark blue orb in the sky up above you. Formerly known as the Holy Companion, this blue light, this blue bolt of lightning strikes down uh, on the pavement right here next to uh, Selefio, and it shatters part of this rocky stone formation to the uh, right side of it, right there. Looks like we need to move. Yes. Rhea, you know these streets better than anyone, probably. We'll follow your lead. How do we get to where we need to go? We have two options if the city is still Intact. If the bridges are still intact, if the bridges are out, you know how we're going to get across. Uh, I can't imagine the river came with the sea. But in either case, she starts heading westward off of this map, leading the group. John Green will be like, hey, lady, I'll keep you and your kids safe. Stay near me, man. You know, we would be able to help them more if we had uh, inspiration cards. Just saying. Yeah, I was 
toying with whether I was going to bring it up or wait for one of you guys to bring it up, you don't feel quite so inspired here in Avernus as you did in Faerun. Is all I can say about it right now. I think Ben is crying. Holy crap, is he crying? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, I might have, but I'm not the one that kind of really needs the inspiration cards. <laughs> yeah, ben, t ben tends to roll pretty well, but uh, this is definitely uh, not good news for those of you who don't have Ben's dice. Or my dice. In any case, uh, we proceed on to the next map. Here we go. With our new refugees in tow. I'll take the lead right. with Reyna. Yeah, I'll be up there in the front as well. Uh, world. Is that red strip? Is that lava? Is the floor lava? Because <laughs> that's what it looks red. Like lava -like. The floor is not lava, but it is the ground that hell is that hell is made of. It's almost just uh, you see this on occasion in these maps on the city, just indications that the city is still partly what it used to be, is partly becoming one with hell. It's in a transitory state. Gotcha. Okay, just, I just want to make sure I don't step on it and like oh melting, melting. If Rulok stepped on that, he would definitely go, ah. Could be accurate, yes. All right. Not lie. We have Rhea leading the way here, so I'm going to switch places with uh, Celephiel or Grulok, basically. I had her in the back just as an estimate for how we would start this map because that has typically been her position as either a protector, uh, watch your back, got your six, any number of those things. So... Why not put her right in front of uh, Grulak? Because Grulak has a halberd, and he's good with two-handed weapons. There was a my plus one like great sword. But I can do that. Yes, that's what. That's yes. Exactly what yeah, that everybody, everybody, point. just back it up, back it up. All right. So we proceed forward oh. into this section of El Terrell, where this red patch of ground, even though it is not lava, this is definitely cause for pause. I will uh, get down to one knee, <clears throat> and I will touch the ground, just to make sure that it's not radiating like heat or anything else that's nasty. It's definitely hot, uh, but your gear will protect you from that. I mean, if you were walking through here uh, with no shoes on, that would be a different thing. I'll look back to the um, woman and her kids and ask her, are you familiar with this ground? Is this something we should be worried about? We have not seen any of this in, in our neighborhood. Um, I look at Lulu. How about you? You know anything about this? The terrain does look familiar. It is not anything that I have any specific recollection of, however. Nothing to it but to go. There's no other way to go. Exactly. Uh, be, keep your eyes sharp. Warlock's impatiently waiting for Rhea to start moving, so he's clamoring to move around her if she is not moving forward. Ah, there she goes. So he'll start, you know, falling behind her. At a safe tactical distance, if you will. Okay, and you're able to uh, proceed through this hellish terrain, for lack of a better term, or that might be the best term of it. Uh, without any 
any incident. However, Kalidor, as you approach that spot right there, this entire structure on your on the south side of your position here is just collapsed on the front side of the building. The rest of the building seems to be kind of in various states of uh, in, of destruction. And Kalidor's passive perception, he can faintly hear some pounding and some cries for help. Uh, he immediately stops. Um, there are people in this building. We need to help. I'll, I'll go in. And I'll start going around and trying to see if I can hear that what he's talking about and uh, start stepping into the, the I don't want to step in, I'm trying to move my character into it yet, but he's kind of peering in and starting to listen and try to sense where the people are. Yeah. Did I share real perception? No. Uh, what Kalidor is pointing out to you, once you guys kind of tune your ears to it, you can all hear. There's definitely somebody in there shouting. Uh, it's shouting in common and in dwarf. Uh, it sounds like the same person calling out, just alternating between the two different dialects. The same, help, please, we're trapped in here. And then the dwarf uh, equivalent. This structure looks on the verge of collapse. Uh, none of you, as best I recall or am aware of, have any uh, construction or architectural experience. So this might be a touch and go process to try to rescue these people that are in here. You have a variety of skills, abilities, equipment, magic at your disposal. So put your heads together a few minutes and uh, decide how you want to try to get these people out. I kind of look up in the sky for any kind of threats that may be readily evident, and I'll say I can go low, fly up over this building, and see if there's any access points from the roof. I don't want to land on it though, it looks like it's too weak. We should start removing some of the loose stones. <clears throat> Anything that feels tight or stuck, we should leave in place because that might be holding stuff up. But anything that's loose uh, is really not contributing to keeping this thing up. Okay. Yeah, I can find like a hole or something in the roof. I can maybe lower a rope down to someone and have them climb out that way. But that's the best I think I could do flying over the top. Uh, do me a favor and mute your, uh, your music there, brother. Uh, it's kind of cutting you in and out there. Or lower, anyway. Uh, I think you said something about a rope? Yeah, I said, you know, maybe if I find a hole in the roof or something like that, I could lower a rope down to somebody, but that's probably the best I can do if I go over, because it doesn't look like it's going to have enough stability to hold my weight. You well, do the problem so we're... Go ahead. So I think it's if well, we're probably not going to see them. If the building collapsed, they're probably going to be under the rubble. I don't think they, unless they somehow deftly avoided it. So I don't know. It, just, it seemed like it would make more sense for us to, just to start clearing uh, the ruble. <laughs> Rubles. Wow, I'm Russian. Uh, da. Um, Dasvidanya, as I say. So I will. I just think we should start focusing on the rubble and watching for anything that's a weak point, like a strut, like a strut or pillar that's kind of damaged. And, and like, like Selfville said, just kind of start moving the loose rubble out of the way instead of like focusing up top. We probably need to use your efforts more down here than up there. If that makes sense. Between those two options, you kind of have basically the same uh, course of, res of resolution can clear the rubble from the top of the building and possibly free these people that way. But it probably would be easier to try and get at them from the bottom side here just because there's likely more rubble on the top side. Everything just kind of fell to the bottom. You might be able to tunnel your way in a shorter distance from ground level. It sounds like we are looking at perception athletics and acrobatics for the uh, skill checks for the the tasks that you are suggesting. 
Can I just do an aid, another action or the help action to give somebody advantage on those? Oh, absolutely. Well, I think oh. um, Grulak and I are the most uh, athletic of the two, so we should be the ones moving stones. Yeah, I could definitely Grulak as soon as I you know, can, he's going to start moving stones. I was about to cast some spells on people. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Go ahead and do that. Okay. So I figure if we make a hole big enough for Jahoon to wiggle his way through, he can get us a better idea of what's going on inside. Oh, yep. never mind. One person, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, athletics checks from those who are trying to open up a tunnel and perception checks for those who are trying to direct their actions. Oh yeah, cool. Holy crap. It's the whole building. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes all our natural 20. Oh, that's okay. I'll take it. That's uh, okay. That's wow. <laughs> Ah, uh, Justin's left out. Well, all right then. Uh, that was actually Sam. Eh? Oh, okay. So we got a 23, two natural 20s, and 18. And uh, the long and short of it is, you are able to successfully pry away the most pivotal pieces of rebel so that you are able to get a tunnel to access these dwarves. Crawling in and getting them is not necessary because as soon as uh, you've not only cleared enough rebel to act to open up your own tunnel, in the process of doing so as a result of the natural 20s, you've also kind of reinforced the, the ceiling of the little uh, hidey hole that these dwarves were trapped in so there's no need to go in there and pull them out. You've actually kind of freed them just through the process of, all right, let's pry up this wall, let's pry up this one. And here come these three dwarves who are most thankful for your services. And there they are. recognize does Kalidor and Selefiel, this dwarf right here, a female dwarf with a red beard. She is uh, garbed in the vestments and wearing a holy symbol of Moradin, who those who've been with Roleplaying Unlimited long enough know that uh, if you worship Moradin and you're a dwarf, you can make a suit of full plate mail in 24 hours. Only if you're special people. <laughs> <laughs> Little inside joke there. I think two people might remember that ever. <laughs> Dawn's one of them, of course. I thought that was Clangadin Silverbeard. That's right. It was Clangadin. It was. Borden was, yeah, my bad. Look at that. I, I'm remembering it wrong anyway. No point. Oh. You've saved our lives. What can we do to repay you? You can join us. We are trying to uh, rescue the people of this uh, city before it gets sunken into the river of Styx. That's, that is a worthy mission to join. We would be honored if you'd have us. From you do need to bring your own coconuts. <laughs> Sliding over to the other side of the street here, if you take a peek, we have some devilish individuals who are approaching, and it appears that due to this large spiky blockade here in the center of the street, you neither side notices the other until about this point. These three devils in the back you have encountered before uh, they are spined devils, and they are particularly nasty. You've only ever fought one of them at a time, so to see three of them is perhaps a little, uh, a little terrifying. 
Uh, this little guy up here in the front is a different kind of fiend that none of you have uh, seen the likes of before. I draw my weapon as soon as I notice them. Okay. Yeah, you uh, you hear them actually before you see them, despite how close they are. They actually see you before they hear you. Uh, or they might have been drawn to this area by the noise you were making in clearing the rubble. You're not exactly sure what prompts their arrival here. But the three spine devils in the back are grumbling something in Infernal that even those of you who speak Infernal are unable to make out exactly what it is just because of the distance that they are and the ambient noise of being in hell and the city being drawn down into the river Styx. Standard conversation from 40 feet away all of a sudden isn't as easy to hear as it usually is. Uh, regardless, all sides are aware and combat will commence. of these initiative tokens here, just because we won't necessarily need all of the NPCs. Oh, come on. Action. Arm the two-year-old. <laughs> I gave you guys plenty of opportunity. How many extra long swords, short swords, extra suits of chainmail did I give you guys along the way and you just liquidated them all? This is your army here. You've got all that gear so that you could equip them. Or, all of that would have been lost in that bag of holding. <laughs> yeah, that some, someone lost. <laughs> Listen, I know you guys are talking about me, um, and that's fine. Uh, things happen, things get lost in life, and... Uh, I think you should just let it go. <laughs> you know, I, I, again, I don't know why you're holding on to it. It was just a, a bag of holding. That's all. You wanted to give away all of our party money that we had left just to get another bag. Which, without the money, we wouldn't need <laughs> the bag. Um, I think it's a, it was an important bag. It was important to me. And maybe well worth <laughs> all your, our money. So, whatever. I the world me. <laughs> I'd like to have a bag. I'd like to get a bag. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have our initiative order. Let's make sure that's correct. <laughs> My first natural 20 of the night, and I use it on the random dwarf acolyte of Moradin. All right. I guess with that being the case, and the dwarves only just now freed from their days-long imprisonment, she is going to lead these two dwarves to the back of the formation, where hopefully your collective will be more than willing to uh, serve as meat shields for their needs. That will bring up the devil, the fiendish creature which you have not encountered before. Alright, so this will likely apply um, just in the, the former sense, obviously. The Spine Devils are not CR6 piece, thank you, Living Stars. The Baragon Devil will step forward and uh, looks like I'm going to be attacking Celephi. Comes two at you, Don. Good thing I missed on the first one. Right, because I've lost almost half my hit points on that one attack. <laughs> wow. So, 
this devil uh, is apparently off to a, uh, a very good day. Fortunately, well, I do still have a bit of movement left, so I will take refuge back behind this cover and bring it up to our NPC. You guys have helped her free her children, so she is going to take a shot at that devil behind cover from her current position. Holy shit! Hey Don, you want to play this NPC instead? She's pretty good. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, well, she only did four points of damage though, but yeah, she's she's technically a CR half though. Just look, think of the potential. All right, Ray is going to take a chance, and she is going to form the head. I mean, the point of the uh, formation here, and do her trifecta on the Maragon. Wasted natural 20 for a missed one-handed attack. Second attack will land. Third attack will also land for a combined 15. Slashing with a silvered weapon. I'll double check to make sure that effect's full. I'm pretty sure it does, but while I'm double checking that, uh, Kalidor, why don't you go ahead and take your turn. <laughs> I got a feeling she will show up so left heel. No wonder he won't. And me, he, he just knew that she was destined for this. Why do you think from the get-go? He was like, all right, you go round up all the survivors you can and just go meet us at the at the egress. I don't want you around making me look bad in front of my buddies. <laughs> So he'll just move up and uh, take an attack with his longsword. Okay, 22 with a silver blade. Ow! Why? And, um, that'll be it for there. EOT for me for now. Awesome. We'll bring it up to our tiefling sorcerer. What you got? How tall is that little jagged piece of stone thing there? The tallest spike is uh, 15 feet. Most of them are about 10 feet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of launch in the air just enough to get over that so I can see those uh, spine devils in the back there. Okay. And I'm going to hit them with a fireball, but I'm going to use my... Sorcery points and my transmuted spell Meta Magic Feet or power to make it a thunder based song ball. Is it going to affect Rhea? No, I'm going to kind of center behind them so that it hits them but not her or even the other devil. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, just those three guys. While you're doing that, I will prepare my dexterity dice. universally. A 
Sonic damaging effect. And two out of three make their save. However, the one that did not is just blasted into a blubbering like its bones just shatter from the uh, sonic damage instantaneous of <laughs> yeah so after uh, going up to that point firing off the fireball I'll take a quick look around make sure there's nothing else and then come back down to my spot on the ground aside from Rhea uh, Nadir well Kalidor can kind of see this too uh, Nadir definitely has the best look at it, though, as he ascends over the uh, jagged rock formation there. The Spine Devils actually looked like they were laughing at what had just befell the Maragon. It went up there, it stabbed Celephiel, and then it backed off, and then all of a sudden it's near dead. And it's shouting at them, get up here and help me, help me! And they're like pointing at it and laughing, and then all of a sudden here comes this sonic ball that instantaneously just destroys one of them. And that'll bring it to Celephiel. What you got? Okay, I move with purpose to my spot so that I can smack the snot out of this thing. <laughs> Do I get advantage from this position? That is a flank advantage, yes sir. Get it, buddy. How do you like it? I believe your fortune took turns, or perhaps. I knew it! Wow! Holy what is crap! Going on? What is going on here? That right. that girl, she didn't he didn't he doesn't want her making him look bad. <laughs> I guess not. Right? Holy crap, what's with all these natural 20s? Yeah, right. I think something happened when I changed all of your character sheets to uh, the new rolling format. So, don't nobody change anything back. <laughs> and then I turn and face the, uh, the rest of them and give them an intimidating look. Yeah, they seem uh, very intimidated at this point. And let's see if our half-orc monk can further intimidate these spine devils. He's actually pretty far back, but monks move pretty quick, so let's see. He's actually going to stay back here with the uh, wounded and the vulnerable to make sure nothing comes up behind them to do some evil to these people that need protection. Okay. And how about Grulak? Well, most of the enemies are a good distance off, so he's like, you see, if you start moving that way, he's going to start trudging over towards that far side, you know, so a bit of a hike. So he's going to move along that wall. So he gets about there, and I was like, mm. well, it's not hurt. <laughs> um, so I'm just deciding if I want to uh, double move or just call it here and get in the mix. Actually, you know what? He's going to stand by there. Because they're going to have to come to us to try to do something. So he's in a, we're in a pretty good tactical position. Um, he is currently armed with the Halberd. So if something comes up and around, uh, like Selfie or whatever, then you an opportunity to do something about it. So I'll just uh, hold my action there in case one of those things come up to us. Okay. Well, I'm not going to move any closer, considering... Why range. not? I do have a bit of a ranged advantage with my spined uh, tail attack. Right. Don't be that scared. hurts like hell. Oh, yeah. Well, it did at level 2. We'll see how effective it is at level 5. And if you're scared, man, it's cool, man. It's cool, man. If you're scared, that's fine. You stay way over there. It's fine. <laughs> fine. All right. So, 
Celestial, you are getting one of them, and Rhea is getting the other. So, first two on you, Don. There's the dice we're looking for. Yep, bounce off my shield harmlessly. And that's what we're looking for as well. Same deal on Rhea. Just a bunch of spines. Ding, 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 ding. And that's all they've got. Aside from... Man, I guess we'll back up this far. For some reason, it seems the world literally ends one square east of here, so we're kind of trapped. My dwarf NPCs in the back, well, they uh, appear quite uh, emboldened by your, uh, your actions in destroying one of the spine devils and forcing the other two to flee, and also destroying this devil in the front. So there is some high fives and some cheers going on back there from the dwarves. The Maragon is going to remain dead. And here comes Harkina Hunt, our CR.5 NPC, who now has uh, some work to do to even the score with Dawn. Why does she want to compete with me? Damn! Because <laughs> <laughs> you tried to kick her out of the group. You were not welcoming in the slightest. Look at that, natural 20 and a natural 1. I was easily. being protective. I was making sure that they did not get, fall <laughs> into this kind of danger that we are in. Oh. That's funny. Well, all right. She is... Batting a thousand, literally, uh, two natural 20s in two attacks. And Rhea is uh, kind of jealous as well of the new NPC. Rhea's kind of like, I've been here for six weeks. I haven't had as many natural 20s as you've had in six minutes. Let's get up here. Hey, I, can get, I can get behind this uh, this competition. I, 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 this can keep going on. This is great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's see who gets the most natural 20s in the night, as long as it's not the DM. No freaking way. All right. Something's got to be <laughs> up here. <laughs> wow. Unfreaking believable. Um, I'm good with this. these rolls right now. So if we could just uh, keep it coming. There we go. It's like all the NPCs are trying to show up. Celepio. Yeah, it's just too bad that uh, we're so small. We're so small time in the uh, the streaming role playing world because I feel like any role players and like we should have two thousand viewers right now that are just like holy crap another natural twenty. <laughs> so the first natural twenty of hers is going to finish off the first devil, and she does have enough movement left to move up to the second one and use the second natural twenty to finish that. One. Did not think is going to be that productive of a round, but uh, I guess Rhea is no longer jealous of anybody's natural 20s. And that is the end of that combat there. Got the map a little bit off keel here on the VTT, but here on the east side of the street we can now see all three of these Spine Devils and the Maragon have been slain, and our characters are... Well, I guess Dawn took some damage, otherwise everybody else is, uh, is pretty good. Um, I'm going to take about ten minutes. You know, <clears throat> as a group, collective, we can all just hang out. We're not taking, like, a rest or anything. <clears throat> but I'm going to use this ten minutes to cast my uh, Summon Steed. By flying steed. Do you so need that... a stable platform to cast that on? Like, are you able to cast that in the middle of an earthquake? Um, all it says is that it's a 10 minute casting time. It doesn't tell me, it doesn't say yes or no, or what, you know, variables can happen. Yeah, it's not going to be contained in the spell itself. It's going to be under the ritual 
rules itself, I'm sure. So I'm going to try to summon my steed. Yeah, we're, we're going to now go into adjudication here, as uh, that is the result of that particular attempt. Does it waste my uh, second level spell, or do I still have the spell slot? If you are unable to cast it, it is going to uh, waste the spell slot, because uh, ideally you as the player and as the character would know the conditions that you could and could not cast the spell. As it is, you're just blindly casting it and hoping that it succeeds. Maybe it will and we're all good, but if the rules say that it doesn't, then you've burned the spell. Okay. <clears throat> Has there been an earthquake every 10 minutes or so? It's very consistent, yes. Fine, I won't cast the spell, especially if there's the possibility of another earthquake coming up and ruining the spell. Well, just for uh, notes, spells with longer casting times do require concentration, so an earthquake would definitely impede that effect. Uh, as it is, I will give you the benefit of the temporary <laughs> rewind, and you will not have burned the second level spell. We will uh, take our pause here, though, at the top of the 7 o'clock hour for our first break, and proceed further into the ruined city of El Terrell uh, at about 10.15 after. So... Catch you players then, and for our viewers, grab a snack and come on back because we got lots more action for you. What's up, viewers? What's up, empty couches? Justin, how you doing over there, brother? James, you here? Oh, for show, sir. Oh, for show. I'm right here. All right. We got the man behind the orc. We got our sorcerer. Who needs the? Who needs that cleric or that paladin? We got this, right? Uh, Gruelock again is the heart and soul of this group. As long as he's present and alive, then anything is possible. And I could tell by Justin's uh, looking over up to down to his right, he believes that. So he is. <laughs> well, I have yet to get any natural twenties myself, so I'm hoping to join the hallowed howls of the <laughs> night of natural twenties. Oh, it's good feeling. Trust me to let you know, because I've had it. I've had it. You've seen. You seen it. I was dead and came back to life yet again. I don't know if you remember that. Two, two natural twenties on death save. Back right. Gruelock's about unkillable. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I think he's unkillable. I think he may, maybe he's up there with the Tarask. Dare, dare I say? I guess we're gonna find out. I guess. Just but, hope uh, that I'm. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> just hope that I'm never playing anything as ridiculous as the Tarask, where I roll three natural twenties in a row. <laughs> as you see in yeah. the chat log right there, I rolled three natural twenties in a row. Natural twenty. Yes. And you remember what happened last <laughs> time I did that. I had a level one Mark. orc hireling kill a great worm red dragon in one blow with a non-magical weapon because those were the rules back in 3e. So uh, yep. 
This could have been a much more significant trio of uh, perfected roles there, but alas, they were Diabolical. just used. <laughs> yeah, they were just used upon the spined devils. All right. Yeah. And uh, I guess uh, that does kind of fall on me. I mean, the last earthquake that we officially rolled for or experienced was at the very end of last session as we arrived in Elturel. So it has kind of existed just as a backdrop to the environment. And uh, it definitely seems that our paladin uh, forgot that that was going on. So we're just going to have a little reminder of the earthquake by... Hey, look, the city's getting pulled further down into the river Styx, and we're going to have some dexterity saves from everybody. Go ahead and roll that now, or are you doing that for us? Well, that's for you. I only roll your initiatives. <laughs> 20. Uh, and that... Not because of the whole natural close, but no no dice, as they say. Deck saves? Dexterity saves. Earthquake. That first one was obviously for a jump run. I forgot to change the name over. Alright, well the failed dexterity save is from Nadir and results in 6 points of damage, uh, whether that is flying debris that hits you while you are aloft, or whether you're on the ground and actually just fall prone and suffer the bludgeoning uh, groundside damage of the earthquake. Ben, you see what everybody's rolling there? Let's get a deck save from you as well. Earthquake time. Well, it's a wasted natural 20, but the DC uh, 15 is good enough. So in this instance, it is only Nadir who suffers damage, and some of our accompanying NPCs are slightly bruised, because if they take any real damage, they're probably dead. You're not sure... One thing you're definitely not sure of, as, uh, as you're here in Avernus, is the passage of time. Everything just kind of seemed to get very strange in regards to your perception of time once you got here. For, for one, there's no sun, there's no moon, the entire sky and terrain around you is different than when you're, what you're used to. But in addition to that, as many of the different planes of existence too, time has, it just works differently here. And none of you are offhand familiar enough to know exactly what the rules are in Avernus as far as that as far as that goes. You just know that you've been here for what feels like long enough to take your lunch break and try to get a short rest. Okay, we will well Will the earthquakes disturb our, our rest? It's possible, but that is one reason why we have now adopted the epic heroic rest variant. So your short rest is only going to take one minute. You can definitely find one minute wherein the city isn't rocking and shaking so violently that you can't get your rest. What's up, Hans Loves D&D? Welcome to the, uh, the show tonight. So yeah, any uh, short rest activities that you want to conduct, by all means, feel free to do so. Hit dice restoration and any action surges, second wins, and what have you.
Okay. Um, I know I'm going to spend at least two hit dice. Ugh. Oh yeah, holler twelve on the hit die. I am okay. And you're only now. down seven. Everybody else seven. All, everybody else needed all the hit points, and they got seven, four, five. <laughs> you only needed seven. You're like, here, I'm gonna get twelve and just leave six on the floor. <laughs> Can I borrow nine of those? <laughs> I'll take those six. All right. You get your brief short rest, and during your minute of, uh, of rest, as you go through the usual activities of making sure your, your gear is in usable condition, the straps on your armor are sufficient for the next round of combat, and most importantly, going through your bags and grabbing a bite to eat real quick, you just find that everything tastes like garbage. It tastes like ash. It tastes just worse than bland. It's just, it's offensive to your tongues to eat. But you know this is food that you brought with you that was perfectly good, that is that has been preserved, but so, something about being in hell has seemingly affected your supplies. What is wrong with this food? It tastes like but oh, oh, nasty. It, it's Meat. probably just a side effect oh. of the land. Side effect of the what? Side effect of the land, of the plane itself, <laughs> of the permeating evil that's within here. I mean, I I'm afraid to even use my divine sight for fear of the it's blinding like the evil that water. I would see. Well... Let me see what happens. We might as well use this now. And, uh... Do we have spices or something to help with this? Or is this a spell of some sort? I'll take salt. I'll take oh, sugar. And water. <laughs> That's fine. And I'm going to assume it's not quite as bad for me. Since I'm half demon or devil. It's not good. I mean, it's it's just not good food, regardless of, of your your heritage. Uh, it's because Avernus has twisted the very molecules of your food just to make it even worse. All right. So Kalador says a prayer to Tempest to provide us with some uh, nourishment for. My mem uh, my friends and the new group members, I'm pretty sure they could use uh, some food and water. And uh, I'll cast Create Food and Water. <laughs> All right. And a successful casting of the spell. There's a brief temporary moment of joy in your character's eyes as you see the Holy Light of Tempest appear here in Avernus. And the buffet table appears and the food and water appears on top of it, and literally a second after it appears, it just takes on this nasty, greasy grime. It turns a putrid smell, and the fresh fruit just kind of withers and rots. It It's still nutritious, and you can still get your, your daily value out of it, but it just tastes like garbage. We're going to have to deal with this. No way around it. Agreed. Alas, it is a suck. But you are heroes, and if it was meant to be easy, it would have been Baldur's Gate, ascent into Elysium, and not descent into Avernus. So we trudge on into the next neighborhood, 
where your characters actually have, you find yourselves in a bit of a unique situation here in that you have completely caught the opposition off guard. You're wandering through another neighborhood. Justin's camera is frozen. There's the most hilarious thing ever. He's just like, uh, oh, now he's back to. <laughs> that shit was great. Uh, <laughs> um, so you're you're passing through this next neighborhood, and you've seen several of these large, spiky rock formations that kind of serve as cover and indications of the transition between uh, the material plane and the levels of hell. And in this particular instance, it is this barrier that blocks off your approach from these monsters. Additionally, the monsters themselves are undead. They look like zombies, but they might be a different categorization, maybe a ghast or a ghoul or something. You guys don't have a tremendous amount of experience with undead aside from zombies and skeletons. Uh, but none of them are aware of your presence. So you've got you've got two different choices here, at least off the top, in addition to any that you create your own, of course. A being, let's see if we can just avoid this encounter altogether. Uh, we're, we've got innocent people with us, our hit points, our resources are precious. Let's not bother with this. B, one of those ghouls is sporting some pretty awesome looking studded leather armor. And he's got a very brand, a very new belt with uh, pouches attached to it that look in very good condition. So this might be a monster worth looting. It's just going to be very difficult to get to that one without alerting the rest of the, the gas school zombies, whatever they are. I have and a question. Of, and then, of course, the uh, the bonus of XP as well. What you got, James? Okay, he's, he's, he's well equipped and portioned. Does he look like a thief that took a bag of holding? Because <laughs> my, my decision's made at that point if he is. But if he's not, I will reserve my judgment for now. Well, see, that's the thing. I mean, your character doesn't know if that was stolen from you or if you legitimately just lost it. It could be a bag of holding. I mean, it's definitely a belt pouch of some type, and all bags of holding, not all bags of holding look alike. True. So I'm going to go ahead and you know make a rational decision and think that's the thief right there. And he has our stuff. So Gruluk will angrily point over there and be like, we should kill that one. I think he has it. He squints his eyes and kind of leans forward like, I think he has the bag of holding. Our coin. Even though, it, how tempting that sounds, um, yes. we do have to worry about our companions and the uh, protection that we are offering them. Harkin uh, kind of really looks cool. over at Celefield. Beb, you needn't worry about us. Uh, your heroics have proven quite extraordinary, and uh, I haven't missed yet with my bow. I think the gods are with us. See, the gods are with us, Celefield, and they're evil. We should destroy I'm gonna, them. I'm going to take my halberd off my back and uh, hand it to one of the dwarves, if they can if they can handle it. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll give it a give it a go. Of course, the zombie with the green exclamation point is the one of interest. You say, take take these out. I think we should. Yeah, you've got these ghouls completely unaware, so uh, first move is yours. I would definitely say the longer you debate about it, the greater the chances are that they will spot you or hear you. I'll lead the way. I mean, I'll do it. I'll I can blast a good chunk of them with a fireball if you want. That sounds amazing. I could probably, yeah, but... I can try and turn a few of them. Hooray! Yeah, Jay let's try to. Loves D and D, hosting the stream with one viewer. Thank you so much. Won't turning them make them run away? And don't they want to loot the guy? <laughs> they run away, can't the That's what I was gonna say, Justin. <laughs> we want your gear. Flee! Well, my thought is, is let's try to group them together so that you get the most. 
um, the most in the same area. I'm open to suggestions on how to do that. I can run in. I can, does anybody have bread? No, I'm just joking. Um, I can run in there and get them kind of grouped together, and then I can run away, and you could drop your, your explosive doom, on the, or you, or he could turn. Them. I think that's a good plan. Well, if we do it this way, if Grulag draws their attention, yes. and as they come charging, if Kalidor turns them, they'll run as a group, and then you just fireball the group as it's fleeing. Exactly. We can try that. I hear, see, I speak canine, and I feel like there's an important <laughs> message being relayed on Justin's side of the camp that he's just not paying attention to. So let me decipher this. The dog is yeah, saying, the dog. yeah, the dog <laughs> is saying, are we trying to loot this guy or are we trying to blow up the gear? That's exactly what he's saying. Oh. I don't think I like that. <laughs> that dog has too much sense, maybe. Um, that's a good not point. If, <laughs> not if he uses a different element than fire. Well, I mean, most elements are damaging in their own respect. I guess instead of blow up, are we trying to damage the gear? Would be a better uh, way of saying it. The gear will get damaged if we're wearing it. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, but at least you'll have gotten to wear it. What I'm saying is, are you proposing destroying the gear before you ever get your hands on it? <laughs> well, I mean, if we're going to stab him to death, it's going to damage the gear, too. I mean, we can go all over the place with this one. Well, we can just hope for the best. <laughs> Let, let's see what we can do about... Uh, Destroying them in melee, saving your spells and your resources. If worse comes to worse, Kalidor can try turning them, and um, we can attack fleeing undead. Okay. Gotcha. So I'll charge the one closest to us. Uh, we're like a point at this one here that I'm highlighting. And, uh, and then, yeah, the rest should come. All That's right. if I don't destroy this in the first blow. All right. Go ahead and make your movement and your attack, and then we will roll initiative. Okay. So he'll just kind of run right up to it with his greatsword in hand, and uh, we'll uh, swing away. Well, I mean, okay. it's not a natural 20, so... Uh, no, which is not. Um, yeah, so that'll be... Uh, that's 13 points of damage, not too bad. For a blow kind of surprising them. Yeah, that is a good slash there. You still have a second attack as well. Yep, and he will do that. So he'll slash downward across his chest and then try to take off his head with the second blow. Um, and away we go. Ooh, nice. Ew, I got ghoul all over me. Cool. So if he goes down, and he'll just kind of grin maniacally and uh, see what happens from this point. I like it when a great plant comes together. All right. I will get our initiative going here. You still have move, probably, if you wanted to back back up. Yeah, I can. I wasn't sure. I was just letting Dan rule the, the initiative. I mean, if he's good with me backing up. If not, I mean, I'm in a semi-decent spot because he's still got to come to me and then go from there. Well, you moved, what, 20? So, yeah, whatever's left. So you can run up there, slash, slash across the chest, decapitate him, and then move back just to, just kind of under or next to that that uh, stalactite or whatever, whatever you say it, that piece of rock. All right, let's remove the super 
superfluous elements from the initiative. Make sure the ghouls actually get to go. There we go. I needed a good initiative, otherwise I was going to be all done before they even got before they got their turn. Well, that makes it easy. Justin, you go twice, and then I go. Alright, uh, Sam is just gonna kind of back up, getting closer to his, uh, wards there, and be like, Alright guys, I got you, nobody's gonna get to you today. <laughs> yeah, they will certainly gather closer around him as he does so. Hold ready in action. If anything gets close to him, we'll take him back on it. All right. Go ahead with Nadir then. How high is that? Those stalagmites that uh, Gulag's next to. Those go 25 feet to their apex. They look pretty sturdy. They do, yeah, those things look pretty sturdy. Alright, I think I'll fly up onto one of those and then cast a spell. Probably hit the, the uh, one with the uh, loot on it because I got that kind of range. Cool. good enough to hit. I don't think I have any necrotic anything, but double check. That. So it takes some damage. And the chill touch nature of the spell does not affect any of the gear adversely. That's so he'll kind of like perch up there, cast that spell, and that's it. See, ever since talk turned away from blowing up the gear, I noticed that the canine protestations have ceased on your side of the mic. Alright, mindless undead, here we go. How easy is it to draw them into a trap? Oh look, it's that easy. Here they come. Come for your juicy treat. Hmm. Come and get it. Somehow the one with the gear knows that you're coming for him, though, and he runs the other way. He wants to hold on to his stuff. No! No! Come back! Oh, yeah, no, I knew it. <laughs> Salacious. Yeah, no effort to, uh, actually, yeah, I will do some dashes here just to get right up in Krulok's business. It's kind of as good as I can get here, though. And I think I've got two that can get attacks on you, at least. One's gonna bite, one's gonna claw. Mm, I did have a natural 20 on me, just on the wrong side of the dice. That bite though, man, ow! That wasn't nice at all. That's my, it is my armor class, right? So that goes to the defender? No, that's the number the attacker is aiming for. Oh, well, then he, got, he just got me. 
Yeah, if it's an opposed roll and it's a tie, then tie goes to defender. But oh, ace yeah, is a static right. number you're just always trying to aim for. Uh, once you've uh, dropped some blood on the floor there, go ahead and take your turn, Grulok. All right, so um, well, I'll do what damage I can uh, before I head out. So I guess the question now is, do I attack the dude with the gear, try and hope to drop him, or do I just... You know, take out somebody else and hope that the fireball or whatever else we get. I'm gonna attack the guy with all the gear. I want, I'm gonna try I'm trying to like you know just cut his head off and hopefully he falls near around that that rock formation. All right. And uh, go for get us back with the natural twenties. Let's see. <laughs> Close. Whoa, double 19s. Whoa. Yikes. And I'll do another one. Wait, the two? You could reroll that two? Oh, yeah, let me do that and then I'll be using the inspiration on the last one. <laughs> I don't see any inspiration in your hand. Did somebody say they were going to give him inspiration? That's awfully nice of you. Oh, well, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, I believe I have a skill for that. To, to counteract it, see. Much more time. No, <laughs> just just suck again. I suck again. Well, reroll that damage die at least. Yeah, let me do that. Come on, old pain. This is wait. Hmm. I'll take it. I'll take. I was gonna say, of course, you'll roll a six and add on. Extra damage, leaving me with one hit point. Oh, you're welcome. You are welcome. Um, okay, so after that, uh, I'll that natural one. Um, oh, okay, so the fighting style, great weapon fighting. When you roll one or... Oh, never mind, I damage dice. Never mind. So I'm going to go ahead and... If I disengage... Can I disengage? That's an action. Here? Unless you're a rogue or another shifty type like that, that you can kind of juke and weave in combat, but fighters are, get up in there and take the hits. If you leave, prepare for four AOOs. Oh. Um, what do you guys think? They'll wait for Ben turn, or should I just go ahead and run back and open up no, the fireball? Again? You could stay there. You've got uh, Rhea there who may take out one or two, and then I'm coming up into combat, so I'll be taking some That's of those cool. hits for you. Cool. So I'll just uh, I'll, I'll end my turn there, just uh, staring down these d weird creatures. And, uh, yeah, end of turn. All right. So our veteran of Torm, she will move on up, and, well, she's got three attacks. This ghoul is... Almost certainly dead. Double long sword and a short sword. All right. Well, too many attacks. So first long sword attack finishes off the ghoul with the gear. Cool name for a song. Rhea will scooch up here, take her second attack on this ghoul, and just kind of smack the flat of the blade off of the ghoul and drop the sword in the in so doing. And in frustration, with her other hand, just stab out with the short sword, which catches the ghoul in the neck for an additional eight piercing. And because it's a ghoul, it just takes the neck wound like any other. Selefiel, so what you got, brother? Okay, so on the sides, it's like a sidewalk, so we can walk around these pillars? Correct. The The little walls that you see on the corners of the streets, like here and here, what have you, those walls are only about a foot and a half, two feet high, so you can easily scale those and get to the other side. You also see gaps in those walls, like right here and over here, so you don't even have to scale the wall. You can just easily walk onto the, yes, sidewalk. Uh, 
All right, first attack on this one. Mm. All right, second attack on that one. You have flank with Rhea, so you did hit for eight oh, okay. damage. Okay, but I'm still gonna hit him with my second attack. Yes, indeed. Very cool. And that is another ghoul that's rocking a lone hit point. We are so good at that. You really are. It never, it rarely ever comes down to you got it exactly. It's always you left it with one. Or it had two hit points left and you critted for 45 points of damage. That will end my turn. Excellent. And we got our back-to-back -back holy warriors here. So, Kalidor, uh, bring it on up. Sorry, wrong one. <laughs> Jong Hoon, does a 20 hit you? Because Kalidor, it looks like he just slapped. Oh no, he might have just tried to kill the innocent uh, dwarf standing there next to him. My bad. I thought that was me standing there. Okay. I guess I would have moved down there. Yeah, I thought the one of the tenants of the Clerics of Tempest was don't do drugs, but... Eh, you know, well, <laughs> sometimes you just gotta try. <laughs> yeah, so he just moves up and smacks him. Gotcha. Two point slash on the ghoul there next to you. I got that. Is that your turn? Uh, yes. Alright, let's see what Lulu's got. I think I'm just going to fly right over the combat and come down behind it here, flanking with Celestial on this one. And see if I can't finish that off with a nice uh, tusk attack. Aw, oh, come on. Oh, wait. The flank advantage. Yeah, flank and advantage. That is good. And Lulu kills the ghoul. Hooray! Now, is the gear damaged when Rhea steps oh! on it? Holy moly! $50 for a new bag of holding. Will that purchase the bag of holding? Thank you so much, Andy Bag of Donuts. Really appreciate that. <laughs> and what were you saying there, Don? So, does Reyes stepping on the uh, gear damage it? <laughs> uh, well, hopefully not. I was just trying to be funny. <laughs> I have this acolyte of Moradin here, who I thought I was going to be using to build full plate armor for the whole group in rockin' time, until Justin disproved that theory. You need a Klangodonite. 
So instead, I will be using my Moradin powers to move up here. And I'm going to cast one of these for Celephio, because it looks like you could use some hit points there. All right, six hit points back. Thank you, good sir. Well, it is, she does have a beard, so it is easy to confuse her. <laughs> but it is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know. I mean, it's a dwarf, so you never know. <laughs> uh, Harkina, she is, yeah, she's got a great spot back here. This is just our little way of saying hello and welcoming Wendy as a uh, tertiary participant in the stream here as we are using the Ayala figurine for our NPC ally, Harkina. Oh, her natural 20 streak will come to an end, but a 16 is still good enough to hit. Dish out five piercing on the ghoul between Lulu and Rhea. And we'll cycle it back to the top of the initiative for Jung Hoon. Stay where he is and use his little air fist power he's got there to uh -huh. just blast that one that's in front of uh, Ben's character. Gotcha. Strength save from the ghoul. Very good. My best attribute. Yeah, that. Did not go over well. What's the damage? And then roll an additional two die six. It's not as gory as it could have been, but you have shoved this ghoul right onto the end of this large spike here. It's just still alive and kind of impaled and flailing about. I guess you've at least taken it out of the combat. Alright, yeah, so he'll do that. That's right. Get back. You can't have these kids for breakfast. Get back, Loretta. That'll be his turn. Okay, and uh, hey, Justin, long time since we've seen you. Your turn again. <clears throat> so I see there's a ghoul like all the way on the other edge of the map. Is that guy coming in or what? You know that one has you know, that one was too far away, and it appears to not even notice what's going on with uh, the rest of you over here. So that was kind of free. Okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna do my chill touch on one of these guys. Uh, just do the one right in front of everybody right there. I'm 
I'm sorry, which one's getting that? Guy in the middle, got it. Takes away half of what he had. And since if this uh, still I might still feel solid, I'll stay up here. Yes, it does. Okay, we have four ghouls, three of which are fighting. One of which is incapacitated. So this one here is going to be a 50-50 between the NPCs. And this one right here looks like we got a fatal four-way. Okay, so first ghoul attacking Lulu. Second ghoul is attacking... Shit, Lulu. All right. in between, when I hit, it's at disadvantage. Uh, sadly, no. The, uh, the bite was from that one, which missed as, just as it was, but the claws was from the southern one. So, it is a hit, but I did make the con save with Lou. So at least she is not paralyzed. And that's it for the ghouls. Brings it over to Grulok. Alright, since we seem to be doing alright, uh, I'm going to attack this guy to my right, right hand side first, because he's about to go down. Or at least appears to be. So I'll attack him first, see how that goes. that for a dollar. So, uh, I'm gonna say damage. I'll reroll that one. Oh, no, Unless no. he goes down. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and then he'll attack the guy directly in front of him. So he'll like, essentially punch his greatsword through that, that is the, the one zombie's head. And he'll attack the next one. Okay. Also with advantage. Oh, the advantage, cool. Yeah, that was a 17 hit. 17 Giving you advantage there. So that's going nice. to just about annihilate that zombie in one or the ghoul in one strike. Nice. So he stabs one through the head and he comes down and runs that thing right across his chest, leaving a nice deep gouge. We're like laughing again maniacally, and uh, he's gonna end his turn right there. Because it's mandatory that it feature in every episode of Roleplaying Unlimited, you've never heard a ghoul go, ah! <laughs> but don't worry, that was coming. It's maybe not these ones, but it's that's a coming. All right, Rhea is going to just kind of cut through here. Continue the flank advantage dance. She picked up her sword along the way. Yeah, she had to. The long sword. Thank you. Yeah, she dropped that sucker last time. Hopefully she holds on to her weapons this round. Oh, wow. Man, that hilt must be getting bloody and slick. Because, yeah, she comes in. And... Hmm. Wow, that's ironic. All right, so yeah, she steps over, first attack, finishes off the standing ghoul between her and Grulak, redirects her attention, get that initiative out of the way, that way, and she's going to go over and finish off the one that is impaled. 
And only due to the fact that it is impaled and she has advantage does that natural one become, in fact, a 22. And she is able to finish that one off. And that will conclude her actions. So, Lefiel, back over to you. Is any of them still up? Just the uh, the free one over there on the uh, the far side. Which, technically, you don't even have to mess with. I mean, it still doesn't seem like it notices what's going on over here. So if you just discreetly kind of move away now, it might just be left alone. Or you might want the XP. Yeah, it would take a little bit for me to get over there, though. Um, let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. Um, yeah, I'll present myself as a tasty target. Yeah, but I didn't bring a can opener. And that will... I will... Um, Ready in action for when it comes close to me that I will smack it. And Kalidor moves over to you. Alright, so looks like the combat's here. Can we see? that zombie all the way over there from where we're at with this spiky thing in the way? It's got a cover bonus if you're talking about ranged attacks, but as far as being able to see it, yeah. I guess I will start moving towards Slefio to at least cover his six. Um, and I will hold my action in case something might spring up from an ambush over there, I suppose. And then I'll, if it does, I'll cast a spell. Okay. Well, Lulu lets out a, a loud yipe at the uh, claw attack that just landed on her. So she's going to fly up to the top of this rock here. Just kind of... Mm -hmm. uh, nurse her wounds for a moment and the acolyte over here will save her strength for later on brings it over to Harkina who does not see much going on here but the friendly competition between her and Celephiel she sees an opportunity to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat she will finish off this ghoul in one shot. Oh man. Well, not necessarily, but uh, she's still 100% successful on her attack rolls. So that ghoul takes an arrow in the chest and Celestial just kind of glances over of course it's her that shot it. So let's go back to Jong Hoon, who is uh, providing escort duty for our refugees. At that point, he's probably just going to remain where he is with a ready to action. If anything, you know, the threat comes within range, he'll uh, attack it. But at this point, he's pretty sure there's no more danger. They've got that thing over there. He's just going to hang out here and be like, all right, everybody. Everybody's still calm? Yeah, it's good, because we're having, we're having fun, right? <laughs> One of the toddlers actually kind of giggles at that, which is a sound you would not expect to hear in Avernus. So if that's Jong Hoon, what's uh, Nadir? Well, from my perch up here, I have a pretty good view of that ghoul, so I'm going to I'm gonna flame bolt him in the face. In the face. Hmm. My AC is a 12. You just missed. Just whew. 
right past its ear. Well, all right. Yeah, it's not worth blowing anything on, so I missed it. Yeah. Well, the ghoul is definitely aware now after having taken the arrow and the fire flies past it, so I'll just shamble on up here and uh, try my best impression at getting this can of spam open. On I take my attack. You got your ready? Go ahead. Well, uh... Hmm. Brain fart there. I mean, the ready comes after the action that triggered it. Well, I guess the action was if it enters the square, not if, not if it's attacked. So. There we go. Successful wallop. Bone crunching sound on that ghoul. And Can I get both my attacks? From a ready to action, or is it just I get one attack? I believe it is just the one, but let's double check. Just one attack, because technically you're using a reaction to attack, and you only get the extra attack when using the attack action. I got it. Okay. All right. So the ghoul is definitely worse off now. We'll try one last hurrah here and bite through this can and break most of its teeth in the attempt. Okay, Grulok, what you got over there? Um, being super composed, he's gonna, you know, rationally look at the situation. Not to screw that. He ain't doing that. He's gonna go over there and uh, destroy that uh, one goal over there and get to him. So he's gonna come. I'm surprised you're not reaching for the goodies. Yeah, is goodies. that your bag of holding? <laughs> Could be. Uh, but it'll still be there. And we're not we're not blowing up anything, you know, from my knowledge. That's what you. Think. Let me just take just a look. Left, you just left five NPCs behind you. <laughs> I hear you right now. Look at this stuff, guys. I'll kill you. Try to see if I can even maybe get to him. Oh, no. So close, but so far. Five, ten. Nope. No, he cannot. Um. So, you know what? He is going to start... Uh, checking that guy because he, he has absolute confidence in self filled to murder that guy, that uh, zombie. So he's going to start looking over that uh, well dressed uh, zombie. All right. Well, the uh, rather new studded leather armor is definitely the first thing that catches your attention, although the belt pouches are definitely removed and in your custody by the end of this six second phase. And as Grulok is doing that, Rhea is... Okay, we're going to have to take the long way. No, we don't. We can just hop over this wall here. Excuse me, Kalidor. Pass through your space there. Yep. And I got enough movement left. Come over here. Get the flank with everyone's favorite Azamar. More than likely, this would be the conclusion of the combat. If I can stop natural wanting the silver longsword, that is. All right. Yeah. Hack, slash, and last ghoul is defeated. Yeah, it's too bad I couldn't summon my horse. I would have the toddlers riding the horse. And it would protect them really, really well. Oh, for sure. I guess, at the least, we're we're not lacking when it comes to extra characters to stand around to help out with those kinds of duties. <laughs> yeah, 
Is there anything of note that I can see from my elevation here? Uh, nothing additional from uh, what you spotted on the way in here, which was the, the cool gear on this ghoul. All of these buildings appear to be destroyed, collapsed, and completely unusable. And you don't see any other monsters or citizens wandering the street either. So I'll say, uh, from my vantage here, it does look pretty clear in the direction we're going, for now at least. see what we have found on this ghoul. Go ahead and add this stuff into your party treasure and then I'll post that for all to see instead of texting it in the chat log there. This will just be easier. Alright, again, one second. I'll be right back. My sister needs me. Okay. Hey, we have dwarves with us. Maybe they can fix the jeweled ceremonial dagger. You forgot they don't worship Plangadin. Oh, that's right. They can't instantly repair stuff. Right? Yeah. Otherwise, they need an actual uh, anvil and workshop like a normal blacksmith. Bunch of idiots. Okay, here is our... Party treasure sheet now posted. I think that's going to pop up on the. Yep, there it is on the stream. So we already had the rations, the caltrips. This ghoul was carrying the explorer's pack with the backpack, bedroll, mess kit, etc. There did not have any coin, but the bottom two it items there the plus one studded leather armor and the potion of invisibility are absolutely uh, new acquisitions. I'm glad I didn't think to drink that potion. Yeah, the little backstory that they give in the module was that uh, this guy was an adventurer and these were his comrades and they were killed in the early hours when El Terrell was dropped down into hell and he still has his new gear with him. And that was the only thing I was really worried about being destroyed was the potion of invisibility. I'm like, well, the armor, I mean, it's going to take some damage, but it's still going to be a plus one suit of armor unless you completely disintegrate it. And the Explorer's right. Kit, nobody cares about because everybody's carrying one of those anyway, but that potion of visibility, that would suck the fireball and then just find the remains of it. And you seem to have missed the uh, bag of holding. Uh, a slight oversight. Damn. That, that's fine. You know, may, maybe I'll get you on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> We are screwed. When you can be trusted to hold on to one, your party will be given another one. <laughs> right. And and if we get another one, one of us will hold on to it. Like Justin was saying in the uh, the recap there, he was like, I was pretty sure Don's character was holding on to it. And James was like, well, it's on my sheet. And it's like, well, yeah, it is on James' sheet. Sorry. <laughs> Stupid thieves. I will Stupid find fat room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there is your new acquisition. We have uh, defeated the ghouls and proceeding further into El Turil. We have now reached this spot on the map. Doesn't help if only I move to the map. There we go. Blurry, zoom out, it comes crystal clear, and here we are. So here's the two bridges that Rhea was talking about here. 
crossing. Uh, there's a north and a south bridge. And there's just a whole bunch of nothing crossing the what used to be the river here, uh, splitting the city. And then as we discussed at the end of last session, this ruined looking keep over here is our destination. At this point, Rhea has led you to the closer route, the southern bridge, which will hopefully get us out of this terrible eastern side of the town where things are supposedly worse, and all the closer to the high hall. How, how far across would you say that chasm is? Uh, if you were to average it. That's uh, coming up right here and right now. As you approach the bridge, you spot that the rift in the earth divides El Terrell into two sections, and the riotous din of the battle taking place, or of a battle taking place, you don't know what the battle is just yet, taking place far below the city is louder here, echoing up and through the jagged open chasm. A bridge 20 feet wide and more than 100 feet long spans the chasm, and holy runes etched into the stonework of the bridge indicate that the structure has been consecrated in the name of Torm, god of courage, courage and self-sacrifice. Six <laughs> infernal creatures stand guard at the center of the bridge, scanning in all directions. You spot two bearded devils and four spined devils. I'm assuming none of which have back holding. They're just going to throw it right there. Well, if they do, they're not waving it around with a big exclamation point above their head uh, pointing you to it, unlike the last one. Wait, guy. I think I see a bag of holding on one of them. Kill them all. Mur murder to ask, kill. <laughs> kill them all. <laughs> this is a bit of... Uh... A pause here in the group as you're observing the bridge, and it is at this moment that the chains shift again, drawing the city further down into the River Styx, and that will prompt another round of dexterity saves. I might have jinxed myself because I definitely know I wrote in the chat that oh yeah, I'm very dexterous. Soups dexterous. Yeah, you did. That ain't good at all. Ah. Uh, so yeah. looks like everybody except for Jung Hoon is taking some damage, but Grulak is definitely going to have a potentially worse effect. Mean. Okay. It's it's right. Right. Six points of bludgeoning slash slashing damage as uh, your characters once again are just sent tumbling through the streets as a result of the city's axis just radically changing direction. And in Grulok's case, with the natural one, um, let's just uh, finalize that natural one here before I declare the actual effects. I don't want to get into this is what happens and then somebody say, I spend inspiration. So, is anybody going to give him their inspiration now, or are we rolling with this natural one? I do not have any inspiration. <laughs> Alright. I don't see or hear any volunteers. So, Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not doing that. That's fine. I hope one. <laughs> I yeah. appreciate it. Uh, Grulok is, instead of rolling into a sidewalk, into the rubble of a building, into anything that stops his movement, instead rolls right to the side of the, the chasm. And it looks like he's about to roll off. And you're not sure how far of a drop that is, but you're pretty sure that Anybody that falls down off the side of the city, unless they can fly, they're dead. 
So let's get another, uh, let's get a strength save from you this time, James. Strength or athletics? Will we, will we be more appropriate? Uh, it's going to be a saving throw. Saving throw strength? Yep. Okay. Okay, not bad. Perfect. So you do one Oof. of those cinematic, you're sliding and your fingers are digging into the ground as you fall off the edge and you just manage to hold yourself up right there at the very edge. And you're, just looking, you're just looking down like 500 feet to the, the floor of the pits of hell and Grulok is just like... Pull me up. Pull me up right now. <laughs> Well, see, you asked, and now you got a good look of what what it is. Yeah, there's nothing. And just pick me up. We'll give us a scar shop here. Uh, and if they're not going to know he's coming to help me, I'm going to start to get up on my or try to pull myself up. No, I'm going to I'm going to go over and give him a hand. Yep, I run over and try and grab him. Perfect. And as our two holy warriors approach the side of the chasm, trying to stay out of sight of the devils upon the bridge, I assume are also getting back to their feet after the city was just kind of turned upside down for the thousandth time. Uh, both Kalidor and Selefiel spot uh, a series of runes etched upon the stonework of this side of the bridge, and you instantly recognize these runes as kind of a, a, a defense in holy cities such as Elturel to where if you can successfully activate these runes, it'll produce a radiant energy that is harmful to fiends and undead. Now, that's great news for you guys, considering that you might be able to get the drop on every one of these fiends that are on the bridge. The downside is you have to pray to Torm, because this is a city and a bridge that has been consecrated in his name. So you don't necessarily know the proper incantations and the proper prayers to speak to get Torm to listen to, but you do have a potential workaround to this encounter. Well, Ray is a worshiper of Torm, which is not like a divine character, right? Exactly. She might know some of the, the rites and the passages to say, Well, let's ask her. I do not have them retained to memory, but I... It's, it will take some searching in my mind. I know that it is the type of thing we will get but one attempt at, if I am incorrect in my beseeching effect will alert the devils to our presence. But I am willing to give it to Shock if you wish to place this in my hands. Well, I'm sure that you would, you know, I have faith that you would be able to know this, um, being a protector of the city, and then this is obviously a protection for the city that you would have the strength and the ability to do this. Haven't already been very close to the bridge. I'll probably let somebody else go closer this time.
was muted there for a second. So Rhea moves up to the uh, far side of the bridge here, or your side of the bridge, and you can see her kneeling there and praying in earnest uh, to Torm. And because of her affiliation with Torm, she gets advantage on the roll, which is going to be sufficient to make this roll a success. And suddenly the entire bridge just glows a holy white light. And all of the devils that are standing upon it are just instantly thrown into a Benny Hill mode. And they're just running in circles and running back and forth and trying to figure out what's the shortest way off of this bridge so that I don't get eradicated by holy light. One of them actually jumps off the bridge and realizes that it was demoted last week and doesn't have wings anymore. So, ah! And the other five devils are just instantly caught in such a state of panic that they are eradicated by the whole energy. And Rhea turns back to the rest of you with the look of, I did it, on her face. Way to go, dudes. Congratulations. I knew you had it within you. It was your faith in me that gave me the faith in myself. I thank you. I, I hope that our... Our passage will be much easier going forward here. And after the holy light is expelled from the bridge, and you take a brief moment to ensure that that bright light did not summon a pit fiend or something to your location. Uh, looks like the coast is clear. Quick run across the bridge, and at least now we are on the south, or the west side of the, the city. And we have but a straight shot south down this street here to reach our destination and we will begin tackling that particular journey after our second 15 minute break here it's exactly 8 30 so we can pick up at 8 45 uh stretch out grab a cup of coffee grab a snack and uh thanks to our viewers for uh sticking around this session it's been a pretty entertaining one and we're really glad to have every one of you along for this evening uh Stick around, we got our final hour plus coming up after this.